There you go. There's a photo of a guy that got kicked by the police there. That's off how hard they're kicking. There you go. There's uh, the Sikhs are on the front line there, right, right facing the police there. If you see that photo I just uh, posted there, there's a, a whole group of Sikhs there that are holding the front line. They're they're ticked off at Trudeau. Ooh, what's the leg injury? Is that a rubber bullet uh, penetration? No, the police are kicking them. There's like they're right facing them, and the police are pushing the people, pushing them, pushing them, pushing them, and they're kicking, kicking, kicking as they push. And that's that's a guy that got kicked there. Yeah, that's how hard they're kicking him. Listen to this uh, conversation between the cop and the Sikh. It's just like, it's just like our family. We don't like everybody in our family. It's true, folks. Right? The last two years have kind of ripped families apart. We them for who they are, and we still love them. Yeah, except that's not happening now. But, but there's fire in a bit. So I'm going to have a discussion with somebody else when someone else is fighting with me. Okay, it's very good. I'm sorry. Our families, families have been torn apart, right? Yes. By this fire, with the rhetoric you've been spewing, it goes into people whether they're vaccinated or not. It goes into their minds. He says you can't tolerate these people. You're mis- all these things. So it's been. That's all changing. I don't know about that. I like to think. I'm an optimist. I like to think. So that's a little bit of conversation between a, a Sikh Canadian and a, a cop, <laughs> and the cop says, "Look, I'm not going to tell you who I voted for." Uh, yeah, obviously he didn't vote for Trudeau, <laughs> but he's trying. The cop is trying to say, "Hey, look, we have democracy here, and I'm I'm here uh, standing up for democracy." And meanwhile, the Sikh guy is saying, "Well, I, I I'll put my line, my life on the line, and die for the kids of Canada." So there you go. I feed were you watching where the Sikh people were arguing with the police? Uh, that was YouTube. Tire Roasters, all one word, garage. Tire Roasters, garage. He's... Like, I don't know, well, they're not on camera now, but they're kind of beside where, he's, where he is, though. So whether or not he'll put them back on or not, I don't know. Yeah, I like CBC's reporting that uh, there's very little pepper spray being used. Yeah, I would say just the opposite. In fact, there's a photo right there of uh, pepper spray being used. I can honestly say that those police officers and East Indian guys have had more dialogue between them than Justin Trudeau has with Parliament, period. Like, just listening to them talk, you can tell that they're listening to what each other is saying, and they're talking, which is more than what our Prime Minister has done for, you know, the protesters. Well, Trudeau, he needed more tools, like pepper spray, he needed... uh horses hooves to trample people he needed he needed the emergencies act because it has more tools you know uh batons i see they even took a bunch of wooden dowels and cut them up and gave them to the police there they're using a bunch of sticks about four foot long uh round dowels it doesn't even look like police uh, hardware it looks like they went to home depot to get those sticks and that's what the police are using Yeah, like I just noticed that one cop wearing the black was actually standing there having a decent conversation with the East Indian people and they're every both sides were explaining their point of view and I just thought wow like you know those two people have had more dialogue from opposite sides than what our prime minister has had with these protesters 
Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, and that one cop, he obviously did not vote liberal because he even said, I'm not going to tell you how I voted, <laughs> but, I'll, but I'll talk to you about the situation. Liberals will not talk. Liberals are stick in the mud. They will just simply state what they believe and, and not listen to what you have to say. So it's unfortunate, but you can't talk to a liberal. vote for those two to sit down and figure this figure this shit out and leave the, the you know all the leaders out of it let those two sit down and hash it out they were doing great talking to each other yeah um there's actually two groups of protesters right now there's a group on uh wellington at the west end of wellington and that's where the horses are. And then there's another group, I believe, being pushed south on Metcalf, south away from Wellington. So you got two fairly large groups that are broken into two groups. And of course, the police are not going to allow the two different groups to assemble together. So they're kind of pushing them. One group is being pushed west and another group is being pushed south. You're seeing how our prime minister doesn't have time to talk with the, the uh, protesters. I was just thinking and thinking back to that SCN Lavalin stuff. He seemed to have a lot of time, although he would just say he was, he wouldn't even say his office was, was but they sure made time for the SCN Lavalin uh, crooks, but won't make uh, time for the, your basic law or your basic uh, protester <laughs> who I don't think he should re be calling all the names he calls them. It's like he doesn't care about those who didn't support him and he doesn't care about those who did. He's just looking for power and more money and votes and that is it. He really does not care about the people that are beneath or people that he feels are beneath him in this country. That is one of the problems with our society is that we're so used to segregating people in general. Like, you know, like there's a lot of people that might say um, live on welfare that somebody who makes $50,000 a year wouldn't even give the time of day to because it's they just view them as being beneath them. And I think that's just kind of a society problem. And Justin Trudeau is like, you know, the top of that level where he thinks he's better than everybody. Good morning, guys. I'm just waking up here, catching up. Um, I was kind of looking at the live feeds there. Did anybody uh, hear if they touch base on that woman that got trampled in the parliament? Have they brought that up? I'm not. I'm not sure if I missed that or if they've done that. Can anybody enlighten me? That she's okay. That she uh, was treated in hospital for a dislocated shoulder. Um, uh, I don't know if she's Mohawk from here, like Algonquin or where she's from, but apparently she is Mohawk and she was um, standing there with that white flag and the horse bumped. I think it looks like he, he tripped over her or bumped into her and then tripped. Um, but yeah, both her and the horse are fine. I guess are okay. Um, she just has a dislocated shoulder. Um, other than that, and about the guy, I'm not 100% sure what his injuries were, but it did look like in one video that he did um, kind of roll over to get up. No, I knew all that already. I was just wondering if it was brought up in Parliament, because um, I see Parliament going on, uh, if that was part of uh, the argument that he's over ex using over excessive force. He suspended Parliament until Monday. What? What do you mean? Like... So... They can't do anything till Monday? That's what I'm hearing. I'll look into it a little further, but I guess he uh, suspended it until Monday. Monday night is the vote, but he's not allowing them to uh, have a platform to speak on until then. Wow. Oh, my God. This gets better and better, doesn't it? 
watch the live feed that we were just talking about, you can actually see a line of East Indian Sikhs standing there having a genuine, decent conversation with one of, I'm going to assume, one of the higher-ups in the police department that's down there on the front line. And they were actually having a really good conversation and both sides were being heard. Like, you know, that's what Justin Trudeau needs to do. That's all That's all people are really asking for. And he can't even do that. Like, he can't even come down to what he feels would be our level because he's such an elitist um, to, to come out and talk to people. Like, you know, this police officer who's standing there facing down a crowd of thousands is talking to people in that crowd that are standing there facing people that are armed with guns and pepper spray. So, and they're talking. if we want our MPs to really talk about that lady being stepped on, like trampled by the horse, um, that we should probably be phoning our MPs on Monday morning, at least just leaving a message with their office, even though I know it's closed for family day here in Ontario, um, unless it's an emergency, maybe, I don't know. Um, but I would at least phone and leave a message or... Now, he... At the very least, email them and let them know that you would like that to be brought up. If you had to guess, how many protesters would be down there right now? Hard. Yeah, I would. I would guess. Like you've got two two different uh, places where the people are, so it's kind of hard to say. But I would. I would say maybe there's a couple thousand people there. Other parts of the country, I heard Winnipeg was having something too. Got a different protest going on. What it looks like is going on. Um, most, since most of the trucks are gone, it looks like people are showing up on foot. What's that? I found Omicron. So I'm watching some live feeds there and they're showing how they're removing vehicles, but they're wrecking everything that's on that vehicle. Yeah, copy. I saw that. I saw that on CBC. Hey, last that picture you posted there, is that pepper spray or something being sprayed on those people there? Yeah, 10 for you. I posted two pictures there and both of them were uh, pepper spray. It's like a black pepper spray bottle. You know, it, it, they're play. They're gonna play whack a mole. It's just like trolls here. You know, you can uh, you can pepper spray the people and hope that they go away, but it's not gonna work because the people are fighting for freedom, <laughs> and you can't pepper spray away people's fight for freedom. Sorry. Right when it's like the last thing we have left, what else do we have to lose? Right. So, you know, yeah, they're. They call us dumb for standing the line. I think uh, they're pretty dumb to think that we're going to back down. There's nobody going to back down. You have people that were cheering freedom on right across Canada. 
every city, every town, you know, it doesn't matter where you go, people want freedom. And for uh, the government to do what they're doing is, uh, you know, they're doing what they want to do, right? Which is to squelch the opposition, to shut up the opposition, to pepper spray the opposition. Just shut up and go away. That's all that Trudeau wants you to do. And that's what's happening. He's uh, gotten the police to do his, uh, his squelching of people. It's unfortunate. You know, and of course they said, well, okay, if you, if you want freedom, then you are a terrorist. And because you're a terrorist, you can't be here. So go away. So that's what they're up to. So what's your thoughts on this after this is kind of uh, settled down and we get him out of there? Do you think we'll be able to uh, press charges against him? Because I know when we started to feel this was happening, I had brought this up like a year and a half ago and said, like, how, how do we get him out of there? Like with SN Lavlin and we charity when he was robbing people and stuff, breaking the law and stealing money and giving money away that wasn't his unlawfully. Um, why we couldn't arrest him. And somebody just kept on saying, because he's the prime minister, you can't touch him. So is there going to be something we're going to be able to do about this after the fact? Or or is that just something we can only speculate about? Yeah, you can speculate about it. But the police, you know, go, go to your local RCMP. And if you have something that you don't like that Trudeau did, we'll try and lay charges against him. They won't. They won't lay charges against him. Uh, and that's just the way democracy is set up <clears throat> is that you can't you can't charge somebody in power he's he's like scot free all you can do is uh, vote him out if you don't like somebody you have to use the power of the vote but if you have so many liberals that love him so much and love everything that he's doing um what can you do nothing Yeah, that's kind of what I was told and I was kind of upset about it and have been ever since because it's like, how, like, okay, so like when I first got booted off of this site for saying, und de goddamn Vater stinken und Smellenheimer, which I was quoting from the movie The Pest because we were talking about passing gas, I was just trying to be funny, I was like, okay, so um, you must have deleted me because I swore or whatever the case was. And then all of a sudden one of the admins comes in there and she's just swearing away. And I'm like, okay, you just booted me because I swore. <laughs> but because you're an admin, you can get away with it. And that's kind of the feeling I get. And that's like one of the most hopeless, angry feelings that ever can be in my body. Is like when something's good for someone, it's not good for another person. That is the worst thing to come at me with, I swear to God. And that's what I feel like the government's doing, you know, like... Oh, it's okay for you to f and do it. Pardon me, but it's not okay for us to do it. Like I, it just it boils my blood. Like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, it's a sad state that we're in. It's sad the way uh, society has dropped down to such a low level. And uh, you know, it is what it is. So the every, everybody had their uh, say. You know, you've got a part of society that uh, doesn't like the lockdowns and you have the other part of society that wants a lockdown. So guess what? Eventually the lockdowns will be gone. So, you know, at that point we will, we will say, well, we, we won. But at this moment in time, um, we won with the message. The message is out there right now. You watch CBC live, their, their media. That's all they're talking about is the freedom rally go over the CTV. That's all they're talking about is the Freedom Rally. The whole country is talking about the Freedom Rally. The message got out there. The message is out there. So regardless of uh, who you push out of Ottawa, the message is still out there. You can't stop the message. And you didn't stop the message. So at the end of the day, the truckers won. Hey, um, I'm just watching the um, Chamber of Commune right now, and they're debating about uh, voting on, on the emergency uh, act or not, um, with uh, all, like not all MPs, but a lot of MPs. So 
I think um, it's not on yet and why the police went in and stuff like that, it's because it's under the City of Ottawa Emergency Act. Um, that's why they're, or, or the provincial from Doug Ford, uh, but it's not the federal one. So Trudeau can be like, see, uh, it's not my fault. I think it's, it's what I, I kind of understand. Well, you don't know because Trudeau says we want to bring this emergency act in to use some tools, right? The act has tools that we want to use, tools that we want to use. Yeah, what's a tool? A, a can of pepper spray? All of the U.S. is talking about what's going on in Canada as well as other countries. So, yeah, our message definitely got out. Even if they arrest all those people down there, for one, where the hell are they going to put them all? And, you know, it's going to be years fighting in court. Like, he's just got to just drop these mandates and all of this stuff will just go away. Yeah, they're not holding people. They're releasing. They're like, they're charging them with mischief and they're releasing them right away within four hours. They're just doing the bare minimum, um, you know, just to kind of get them out of there, but not really wanting to charge them with anything too serious. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's like, it's like this. It's like they'll charge you with something, mischief, and they'll, they'll probably say, okay, we'll we'll keep you in jail here whatever until you can see somebody or we'll uh, release you if you sign this doc and who knows what the document is that they're making them sign to to get released you know they're probably signing something saying well i promise not to go back to this area that is uh where the emergency is whatever you know what i mean there's a lot in the background that we don't know what's happening but you know they're they're probably getting people to sign some document that is if they do go back there then they'll be in a, a lot more trouble yeah but it's that's that's the thing that i'm watching like um at the chamber of commune they're still debating about the vote the vote didn't pass uh for the emergency act on the federal way so yes about the tools because you want tools and what is those tools you know like uh, chris freeland said like they want to keep some permanent tools for after that so um but right now all the arrestation like you said they they they're not they've not been charged and they've been released like outside of that red perimeter uh in ottawa the red zone they call um but uh they they've been arresting people and stuff like that under the emergency law uh, act on the federal on the provincial level and on the municipal level um and that's what confuse people right now understand is that he was able to invoke it right away but the vote on monday is for him to be able to keep it the way it is or make it like you know um more tough or to get rid of it so i think that's like right now i think some of what we are seeing is his emergency measures act um but he's not allowed to go full bore with it until after the vote the from what somebody was explaining to me Hey guys, um, I'm trying to get in here. My hubby heard that um, what they're doing is they're arresting them and dropping them outside the perimeter. They hold them and they took somebody, one of the guys that got arrested yesterday, and they took, took them outside the perimeter where there was barricades and dropped them off. That's what they're doing. And apparently, signed, like uh, Les said, signing paperwork, uh, stating that you won't come back or whatever the case is. But... They're kind of pulling what uh, Saskatchewan pulled here. I don't know if anybody is up. On Saskatchewan news. But uh, the cops have been taking our Indigenous people and dropping them out of Queen Elizabeth um, Electrical Place in Saskatoon. And they've been finding dead Indians over there. That almost seems like they're trying to pull that here. Like... They call it moonlighting or whatever, where they pick them up and they drop them out in weather that their uh, clothing couldn't handle and they've been freezing to death. Steel, um, 
Night Night Child or whatever was one of the first ones in Saskatoon. The name? Sorry, it was uh, Neil Stonechild. I mixed that up there. Uh, that was the first one that came out in Saskatoon there when they were dropping them off at the Queen Elizabeth uh, station. There, and they found a couple, and it's been quite uh, a big thing here in Sask in Saskatchewan about dropping RCMP dropping off uh, our natives to die in the cold weather, and that just kind of seems like what they're kind of doing here, don't you think? Yeah, just go check out that link that I had there. And that was just the first case that they were on to. There were many, many more after. And like I said, I, I swear to God, everything that they turned around for us Indigenous, they're turning around on the other people that are left. They're doing the same thing, assimilating, they're segregating, and they're taking away rights and everything. And they're entrapping us. And they're doing these things that they did to us. And it's it's quite disgusting, actually. The local restaurant here yesterday to see if we could make uh, reservations for March 1st and inform them that I wasn't vaccinated and they told me that they can't give me an answer until I think it's uh, February 28th on whether I have to be vaccinated or not in order to be able to enter the establishment. It's the mandates by the way but it's just they ha still have to follow the law so they don't get in more trouble follow the rules because it's not really law it's they have to follow the rules or else they'll get in more trouble well then swing over to red deer we um accept dog pictures as uh qr codes here so no problem there girl If you want to put that bar, that uh, QR code in your phone, uh, when they scan it, it said um, the the um, the law they're breaking of the Charter of of Right and Liberty of Canada. So um, that's pretty funny. It's all for you guys. That's uh, that's what uh, appear uh, when they scan it on their phone. Afternoon, people. How is the uh, how is the day going? Give me a quick up to speed. I've been kind of out of the loop for the whole morning and into the afternoon. Did the daily COVID update for Ontario, considering that this was supposed to be. That it's supposed to be, uh, you know, a super spreader event and our numbers are down yet again. People are still so afraid. I mean, the cases have dropped drastically, like I'd say probably by more than half. And people are still afraid of the virus. Should have seen the people at my farmer's market today. I'd say two-thirds of them are all messed up. It's like getting real. What was that? 
I said about two-thirds of the people coming into my farmer's market today, they were all masked up. I was like, get real. Yeah, these people are just uh, such sheep. I mean, it's just amazing. Oh, my God. It's, it, it, I'm on the ground. You got you to gotta watch out, man. We're all going to die again. It's like, come on. Will you people just stop? Earlier that you're a beekeeper? Yep, I didn't look and see who was talking. Yeah, I am. Um, I sell my honey down at the farmer's market every every other week right now. So I'm just unloading my truck, I'm getting back. One hive. Hopefully this year. Hopefully third time is a charm. Um, I still hear buzzing in there. It's really cold here right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, the last two times, apparently I set them up in, in very much the wrong spot on the property and they got too much moisture and they died. Um, and then I think there was an issue with mites. So hopefully this year it'll be a little different and that hopefully this hive will last. They need plenty of ventilation in the winter. The more heat they produce, the more condensation they'll make. Put the hive on just a slight bit of an angle just to make sure that the um that the moisture would actually run out the bottom a little bit um not enough to upset the bees like you know not tip it that much but just a slight elevation so that it runs out um but yeah i had them in shady spots last time whereas this time they're actually out in a more sunny spot and their entrances are facing the south and not um you know a line of trees so <laughs> Direction doesn't matter. Sun doesn't matter. It's just the luck of the draw. Unfortunately, I got one yard that I had 13, 12 or 13 colonies at this year. I'm now down to one. They're in full sun, protected from the north northwest from winds. And uh, yeah, they're almost all dead there mistake I made last year too is I went to go ch check on them and um, I think I broke their um, um, you know how they uh, you know how they all kind of gather together in that in that like one little section I think I kind of made them separate a little bit and then that's probably when the cold got to them Didn't have enough ventilation in their uh, in their sugar feed either. So, which this year I changed that up a little bit. How warm was it when you looked at them? Last year it was very early spring here, but we're uh, we get lake effect where we are. Um, we're a little bit more north of Ottawa, um, so it's a uh, it, it's a kind of colder and a bit damper here. Uh, sometimes so I, I think it was kind of it was a little bit too cold to be checking on them and lesson learned all I will um, listen to your husband no, whatever Derek um, yeah I'll, I'll leave them a little bit longer this year and then check them whenever it's a little warmer you can look at them when it's 40 40 Kinsley off 40 45 degrees uh, as long as there's not really gusty winds uh biggest thing of ventilation is is the uh be sure you got a couple of notches in the top uh, that way the moisture will flow out um, and i'm talking just little b b entrances most of my candy boards they only got like a half inch wide by three eighths tall slot in them just uh, front and back and I just leave one little opening on the bottom and I don't have any condensation issues.
going to get um, an insulated hive, I think, for this year. Um, Appy Hive or whatever, I can't remember what it's called. I'd have to look in my Walmart shopping cart. Um, but it's an insulated hive and it comes with a few extra little just perks with it. So I'm going to probably get one of those for this year around instead of, you know, messing around with, with what I have now. So. Do you insulate it at all? Yeah. Yeah. It's it. The hive is insulated. Um, the one that I have now, but it's, I did the insulation. So, um, the hive that I'm going to, that I'd buy this year to put the bees into, um, it's, it's already built insulated and it does all the temperature control for you. So I don't have to do anything, including worry about moisture. Ah, nifty. I always warn people about playing God though. Uh, the bees can, they can take care of themselves. I sometimes think the more things we do, the more we screw the stuff up for them. Uh, I put two inch insulation on all four sides and under the top. And that's about it. And candy board if they need candy. What I did for this year, um, it's just, it's basically just that silver colored wraparound insulation. Um, I put that on along with just some, the pink uh, um, styrofoam type insulation. And then I put some in the top too. There was a piece on the bottom, but it's not really doing anything because the hive is slightly um, tilted. So the moisture can run out. Um, but uh, other than that, like that's all I did for insulation this year, which was a little bit different than what I did last year. Yeah, he, honestly, you should not have any moisture issues if you provide enough ventilation. Like I said, you, the, the heat from their bodies, as long as you leave a couple of notches on the top, the heat from them will make the moisture flow out. And they'll sometimes get a little bit of uh, frost underneath the cover, but... Usually that's not enough that it's going to affect it. Police are engaging with the protesters. Protesters are saying it's peaceful. We're being peaceful. Why are you fighting with us? The police are pushing. They're engaging with the people. They're shoving. They're kicking. Uh, police are being very violent here at the moment. Yeah, they're punching. They're, the guy, the one cop there has just got his fist going like crazy there. So, yeah, the police are being very, very violent. I think if this uh, so-called emergency act uh, was required, I think that that is what is part of the emergency act that allows the police to all out punch protesters. That emergency act comes into full power, they're going to be allowed to do a lot more than that. Emergency act is already enacted. It's already in place. It's already in power. It's there. That's what's giving them the power to punch out protesters. There are a lot of French-speaking people there that come right from uh, Montreal and right across the border. Hall. But there is a very large uh, French uh, presence or Quebec presence. Um, even uh, their flags, and we hear uh, Liberty, Liberty quite a bit. So, yeah, there's, there's a big uh, Quebec presence in Ottawa there today.
How many cops are staring down that crowd wishing that they could be on that side but not sure if it's safe to join them at the moment? Like, you know, like, I wonder how many of them are going through that th thought that thought process right now where they're thinking about joining the side of the truckers, truckers and just not sure how to do it. Yeah, but you got to think about a cop, though. And, you know, like, facing reality police police become police because they in their mind want to have power over other people and that's be, that's why they become police officers and they basically do that right they're more powerful than you and they exercise that on a daily basis and now that's exactly what's going on in ottawa Just used to kind of seeing a different side of them when it came to crowd control, where they allowed us to do the crowd control, and then they jumped in when we needed the backup. Um, you know, just for like festivals and stuff like that, not for protests and riots, because I don't think you know, I don't think uh, any company I've ever worked for looked after that. But just for uh, big festivals and stuff, they would normally allow us to handle stuff first unless we needed them. Um, so I just saw, but I did see crowd control police at at least a couple of events, but there was also, um, like street gang or, you know, like gang members there. It was a big, um, dance thing. Um, so I understand why they had the heavier police force at that one. And they did have to get aggressive with a few people, but for the most part, they kind of stood back and let, let us handle the crowds. And, um, so I, I like, I, I saw a very different side of them during crowd control than what I'm seeing now. So there goes another uh, troop of 20 police, and as they're walking, they're banging their batons on their left hand. So they have a baton in their right hand, and they're banging it on their left hand as they walk. It's like bang, 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 as they approach the uh, protesters. I think they're going to change, uh, change up forces there on the front line. So they've got a fresh crew with uh, batons at the ready. Pink Floyd, The Wall, Part 2, coming right up. It's funny because I'm watching CBC Live and they've got this Daigle guy on there giving live, you know, and the guy is just out there. He's such a left-wing nutcase. It's ridiculous there. The way he's talking, it's like, like totally liberal... Uh, like the way he's being been conditioned, just, just whatever. It's not even worth watching CBC. I waste my time watching them anymore. Um, I did notice that somebody made a comment that the only people, the only news station that was allowed on the other side of the police line was CBC, and then somebody commented that CTV was actually in with the protesters. Um, you know, doing their camera stuff, like all their interviews and stuff. But that CBC was the only one that was allowed on the other side of the police line. So I wonder what's happening there. What's with all the broomsticks, the cut off broomsticks? Like they're tapping them on their hands and stuff is like, how is that possible? Like why intimidate with cut off broomsticks? Yeah, they look like uh, that they went to Home Depot and they bought four foot long dowels that are about an uh, inch and a half in diameter a two inch in diameter let's say yeah they're sticks and it's intimidation with the sticks and those sticks are to beat people you know they're what they supply a whole bunch of home depot sticks to the cops for nothing no that's to beat people of course yeah i just got the video up yeah those are shovel handles awesome the government spent money buying shovel handles to beat people with. Awesome. Trudeau, you rock. You're awesome. What a jack wagon. And meanwhile, we're buying shovels to clean the roads there to keep it clean. Isn't that quite the far reach from each other? Well, that's why Trudeau needed the emergency order to go out to Home Depot and buy uh, 
sticks to beat people with. Hardware store of choice. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'd say Canadian Tire, but I don't think they sell those at Canadian Tire. Okay, they're giving voice announcements now, the police to uh, get out of the area. Fantastic. I made it home just in time to watch Canadian police beat the crap out of people. Just peachy. Yeah, and they were already kicking people. I, I posted a picture of a guy's leg bleeding there. Uh, cause he got kicked by the police. So yeah, they're, they're putting a, a full on beating on people there now. They're, they're just going to town and they've got those, the particular police are, are the guys with the black helmets and the uh, face shields. They're the worst. And you've got two, you got guys with D on their shoulder and guys with a green thing on their shoulder. Those guys are the most violent. Those police are the most violent. And, uh, I'm not sure where they're from, but. Somebody said Quebec is where they came from, but I'm not sure. Can we speculate as to what the D on their shoulder means? Because I sure have a speculation of myself. Yeah, yesterday they were saying it stands for Dick. Yeah, that's what I was kind of getting at there. <laughs> How much are those guys getting paid an hour to, to beat the crap out of Canadians? What do you think they're getting paid an hour? Well, they're working on overtime. So I don't know what it is to buy you if it's time and a half or double time. So probably 45 to 55 bucks an hour. And like, really, though, we're paying that, right? Us taxpayers are paying that. So we're paying our own government to beat us. Isn't that effing lovely? Yeah, and uh, and whatever. They've got hundreds of police out there, hundreds of police that they're paying for every minute they're out there. And uh, you know where that money's coming from? It's coming from Trudeau's printing press. He just keeps printing more dollars, which causes inflation, which makes every dollar worth less, which basically costs every Canadian. Every single Canadian is paying for all of those police there that are just standing there waiting to beat up people. Well, and the thing is, isn't this a long weekend? So, uh, according to the government, don't we get time and a half? So those cops will be, ooh, they'll be going on vacation. They probably could go on a vacation with just one day's pay for what they're getting paid to do what they're doing and then being on a stat holiday. It's disgusting. Is anybody else watching some of these cops and they're like kind of motioning back and forth, you know, and their heads are in the air and they're just like, it almost seems like they're for, like they don't want to be there. And that's the funny thing. Like they're sitting there going, oh, when is this going to be over? I'm so sick of this. Like it's, it's quite amusing to watch. There's one right there, a tall guy. He's just uh, waving back and forth, looking like he just does not want to be there freezing too yeah roger hey i'm actually watching this on a channel called ruptly 
Uh, let's see what they call it. Actually, it's called RT. Just RT on uh, uh, YouTube. RT. And it's funny because they probably have the best feed. <clears throat> and it's actually uh, funded by the Russian government. So I'm watching Russian TV, which is broadcasting the best footage of uh, the uh, Ottawa protests. Go figure. Hey, Les, can you actually drop that link of, to that channel in the chat below? So, like, because I want to check it out too. Do I just, or do I, can I just type in RT and YouTube and it'll pop up? Copy that. Yeah, RT. Simple as that. RT. So, uh, type RT in the search bar on uh, YouTube and you'll see it. And they're on there. And like I say, it's funded by the Russian government and they have far better footage than the CBC. They're right in there, right at the police line. Like, isn't that kind of funny, though? You know, for the past 80-some-odd years, we've been told uh, to fear the red, you know, better dead than red. And here they are. Here's our government emerging, you know, this communist dictatorship shit. You know, excuse my language. But, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Russia is becoming less and less of a communist state, and the people are being more and more free. And meanwhile... All over here in Canada, we're becoming more of a communist state, and we're becoming less and less free. That's the other news media people there that are just dressed in black that are right up by the front line that I saw earlier in another uh, YouTube feed. I was, uh, that's funny you guys talk about that, because I saw a meme, how they're showing the Chinese government phoning the Russian government going, and they call us a dictator, and they had Justin Trudeau, uh, pardon me, Castro on above them or whatever, sitting there smiling like the clown he is. And they're talking about it. I thought that was quite, quite funny, actually. They deactivated my Facebook, so I don't see any of that stuff, and it feels good. Uh, anybody here if, uh, Zach from ZOT got out? Uh, no, last I heard was his girlfriend last night. She was doing a feed, but uh, I never heard anything about Zot today. Yeah, I was hoping she'd give an update at least, but I didn't know if anybody heard anything. I did research the video a little bit more of the <clears throat> the guy that died. My guess is he probably got crushed and then had that heart attack and died. And I just can't believe that the cops stood there and would not even render aid to him. That That was absolutely disgraceful. Whoa, 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 Mike. What are you talking about? I never heard anything. That guy died. What? What do you, can somebody fill me in? I did not hear that, you guys. I've been defending that it was false information. Uh, I'm sorry. Where did, where, what happened, you guys? When they were pressing, and it was bef before or just during the horses and I I did not download it uh, the video I found last night was on um, I found it on Instagram it was over a two-hour two-hour uh, video it was gonna be like 1.5 gigabytes to download it and I'm like frick I don't have space on my damn phone right now to do it uh, so I watched through it as much as I could skimmed around and when the cops were pressing forward on them, uh, there was a pretty big pushing match. And, I mean, there was one other guy that he went, basically he sat down, kneeled down, and he cowered like a baby. He kept his hands over the top of his head. Well, meanwhile, about 10 to 15 feet behind him, that's where the other guy ended up having the heart attack or seizure. And that was the guy that 
was pictured in front of the cops with his body laying there. But he went down. The cops pushed over past them. The crowd did retreat. The cops got his body back behind him. They never frickin' touched him. They just let him lay on the ground. Oh, my God. I did not hear. Thank you for filling me in. Uh, I'm just... I, you know, I gotta step away from this sh this crap. I'm... It's It's affecting my mental health like honest to goodness it really is well yeah but remember you're just surmising what you're saying i don't believe that anybody died i don't you know unless you can find a news story somewhere to back up that somebody actually died i don't think that anyone did i think that the woman got a, a dislocated shoulder and we never really heard too much about the guy, and I just did a quick search for uh, died or deaths, Ottawa, and I don't see where there's any story on that. So who knows? Up to and see if I can find anything. But last I heard, he was just injured, but not dead. No, it wasn't. <clears throat> it was not the guy that got trampled by the horse. It was a completely different guy. Similar in identity. I mean, they, to me, looking at the pictures of the video of being trampled by the horse and the body that was laying in front of the cops, and then what I saw in that longer video, um, God, I wish, I wish there was a way on the Facebook or uh, Instagram browser that you could look back what it was, where it was. I found the link to that in the comments of one of the posts Oh, man, I can't remember which one it was. I forget if it was the Windsor, the Windsor Convoy page. And uh, Zot is not on his camera. His girlfriend is on his camera right now. So... Um, I think Zot has been banned from that uh, no-go zone. So the police have set up what we're calling a no-go zone, a red zone, that uh, they're preventing anybody from going into um, that looks like a protester. Maybe they're letting locals get into that area, but if you're a protester, you can't go in that area. And it's basically the whole downtown area. So as they arrest you, they take you out of that red zone, release you, and probably get you to sign some papers saying that you're, if you show up in that red zone again that you'll be incarcerated uh, longer who knows what but they're, they're they're obviously doing something for example Zot who got arrested uh, for simply whatever not obeying the police standing on the wrong side of the road he's nowhere to be seen in that red zone and his girlfriend is actually there with the camera I will do my best to look through the Facebook postings to see if I can find that Instagram link to see if it's around anymore. Um, and I'll post the link. If I can get it to download, I mean, even if I download it on my computer, it's probably going to take over two hours, but I, I don't even, I'm not even tech savvy to be able to clip out the portion. Uh, but I can tell you about where the time was. I love seeing all the Sikhs out there. Um, I just want to say uh, I appreciate your support out there for the Sikh nation. Um, it's very nice to see. Miigwech and thank you so much. You guys didn't tell me they deployed tear gas on the people this morning. Yeah, I posted two pictures. If you go back in the timeline, there's two photos of tear gas being deployed. 
Yeah, I never saw that. That's why I'd asked for an update. Holy crap. I'm looking at the video rundown on Facebook of it. Wow. That's funny. The CBC guys had a brown uh, North Face jacket uh, with a camera, and somebody walks up to him and says, Who are you with? And he says, Just let me do my job. So he, the CBC guy never even uh, admits that he's with CBC, and they're all covered up. There's no CBC logo on there or anything. And they're doing like a, we'll hide in with the crowd type broadcast. So CBC just reported that uh, no no tear gas is being used, at least not by the police. Yeah, well, I posted pictures of the police using tear gas, and they used it more than once, sir. So CBC is lying. Shame on the CBC for their biased reporting, left-wing, lefty reporting. This, this crap is making grown men want to cry. That's heart-wrenching. Trudeau will never win. Never. Ever. How can you ever stop the people? You can't stop the people. You can't. You know, the police might push some people one way or the other, and or they might arrest some someone for mischief or whatever, but that doesn't stop the, the will of the people. People want freedom. You know, honestly. How, how can you change a person's mind by giving them a fine? It doesn't work that way. Don't have to change the person's mind. They just have to make them think twice about protesting again, knowing that the first time they got hit with the heavy fine, what happens next time? What makes me sick is that you can hear them in the background, and they keep repeating like Castro does in the Parliament the same thing over and over again. Haven't you noticed that that's all we've been hearing for the last two years? You go into Walmart. Oh, wash your hands, wear your mask, do this, do that. And it's constantly over and over again. Like, I don't understand why, like, he must think that it's brainwashing people. Maybe the the fringe minority of people, but that's such BS. Like, it's, it's, it's just like a brainwash thing over and over again. Imagine, though, he must have crapped his pants when he realized that this thing was bigger than 12 trucks and a handful of people. No, I, I think I counted 13 there, girl. Uh, don't be CBC and give false information there, girl. Just kidding. They're moving in, guys. Watch the new f news feed. They're moving in. Woot, woot. Zada's out. His girlfriend's got him on video. They let him out. And he's not able to film. But it doesn't look like he's been banned from being in the area. Soak right now.
Guys, just a quick question. What does kettle mean? Oh, it's like putting sheep into a pen, right? Same thing. Woo! Zip ties and broomsticks. Out of go, Canada OPP. Okay, you guys said they're moving in. What, what are you guys watching at the moment? Press for Truth has good feed uh, on YouTube. 1988 Watchmen. They have a five screen split. Fun 69 and Viva Frey are also right down, right in the thick of things, too. I sincerely hope these cops go home and have nightmares about doing this to people. I hope they just can't fucking sleep with themselves at night. I don't know, but I think that another uh, streamer got arrested uh, by the name of Tire Roasters Garage. I'm just on his feed right now. His feed went wonky, went dead, and people are saying, ha ha, join Zot. So, not sure what happened to him, but we'll have to watch. Maybe we can hear in the rhetoric what happened to Tire Roasters Garage streamer. Here comes the beatings. Okay, so my question is, is that if they're kettling them and they get them in that small spot and they try to push, where are they going to push these people? Like, what, what, what do they think they're going to do? Like, where do these people go so all they can do is hurt them? What is going on here? You beat the public into submission. Okay, it looks like the big crowd is uh, on Bank Street, just south of Wellington, about a block south of Wellington. And uh, it looks to me like what the police are trying to do is push the crowd out of the downtown area and of course where are they going to push them to the residential area where they, you've got houses and just regular people living in houses so yeah not not too sure about that prospect of moving uh, the big crowds into the residential area that's probably a bad idea so we'll see what happens but so far they've secured wellington wellington does not have any protesters on at, at all and uh, the bulk of the protesters are on Bank Street, about a block south, uh, pushed south of uh, Wellington. Holy crap, there's Calgary police there. Less, they have Calgary police there. Yeah, I know. I know. They were right on the front line there, and they're, we they're wearing their regular Calgary police uniforms there. Which feed are you seeing that on? What channel are you watching, V?
I'm watching the live stream from Brant for Liberty. Um, there's multiple ones on there. Um, it's on, uh, I believe, Twitch. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm watching too. And the very top screen has got uh, the uh, Calgary police there. Copy that. There are no protests going on in Calgary, or is this just him with his, uh, you know, his overreach again? No, that's Sohi the Liberal. Or sorry, not Sohi. <laughs> Thinking of Edmonton. <clears throat> no, but that they've got a low uh, Gondek. Gondek, the Liberal mayor. Of course, she's going to send some police down. Uh, not only that, but we've been having problems with uh, the Calgary Police Chief. Uh, most, uh, not most, sorry. Some of the RCMP and the cops have already turned their back, as you know. Um, that's one of the first cops was from the Calgary Police that turned on them and went viral. There are protests going on in Victoria right now. Like last time I checked a few days ago, there was a few thousand people there. though what are the exact numbers for how many cops have and military who have walked off the job due to this how many are there now that whenever they're done their shift today will have a change of heart and you know see the damage that was being done So the Ottawa mayor wants to uh, sell off all the vehicles that they have seized and keep the proceeds, keep the money. He needs to be voted out of office too. Unfortunately, I don't think that'll happen. How are we supposed to trust the law enforcement after this? And most of all, how are we supposed to respect them after this? Like, they already, you know, are coming out of a dark age of, you know, um, with what our past has been, and now this? Like, how, how do they expect us to respect them when they can't respect us? Yeah, but they didn't uh, put, put the badge on to respect us. They put the badge on to uphold the laws of the country and and make sure that the people that are in power stay in power they're to serve and protect the the politicians not the people that's what the job of the police is Well, that's what I'm saying, Les. Like, how do, how do we get past that now when they turn their backs on us? Like, you know, I, I, have, I have such little respect for them right now. And I know that they're supposed to be doing that. But that's what I'm saying. They're supposed to be working for us, not for them, even though it's backwards. And that's just where I'm, I'm struggling now. I, I, I have zero respect for law enforcement right now. I'm sorry. I'm biting my tongue on how I would handle the situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I feel you there on Mike, because Mike, like I tell you, if I could say what I really wanted to say. <laughs> oh, they're spraying again. Yeah, the police chief uh, just got asked a question. Why are your people uh, punching? Why are, the, why are the police punching people? 
kicking people and while they're down on the ground punching them repeatedly uh, why are they doing that the police chief was just asked that uh, question on CBC and of course he says I haven't seen any video of that happening guys a freaking liar it's all lies just absolute lies how they can just sweep it away running people down with horses beating people with a gun I it just it's unbelievable how they can just deny it over and over again right and then they wonder why people start thinking unpeacefully like we've been doing such good work for i don't know how many weeks but like i always say you hit a dog a dog is a man's best friend okay a dog will not turn on its owner you've seen many pictures of uh veterans with dogs and their dogs laying on their gravesite missing them you beat that dog too much and they're gonna turn And I don't know if I said it on here earlier or not. Maybe maybe the peaceful protesting is the wrong way to do it. Because obviously, if you go and burn cities like BLM does, it's acceptable. And you are given what you want. Um, and you don't get arrested. Very rarely do you get arrested for torturing cities. You got a point there. BLM... Antifa burns down cities and they get a meeting with the uh, city hall and the police department to uh, voice their concerns you know apparently but if you're a peaceful protester well you don't you don't get a meeting with the prime minister who's causing the trouble you don't get any meetings with anybody if you're a peaceful protester so yeah i guess there's something to learn from uh, violent uh, antifa uh, blm protests because they are very like for the most part very peaceful is going to be something that'll go down in history wow that chief of police is really giving misinformation he he gets up on the mic he, right now on cbc he says there's a lot of infamous information going on out there yeah, and then he describes the incident to the police saying that the, the protesters are getting very, very aggressive and that's why they sent the, the horse in. Yeah, no, the, the, what actually happened is the police were pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing so hard against all the protesters that there was no room between the police and the protesters. Then they sent the, the, the horses in. You know, like, unbelievable that the chief of police can stand up there and just blatantly give misinformation. Like, would, um, like, an unlimited amount of Krispy Kreme help here? W what can we do here? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. You know, like, hey, if you're sitting there watching what's happening, you see what's happening. Meanwhile, police chief is probably didn't even see what happened and he's up there giving the play by play of what he thinks happened which is the bs liberal lefty side thank you to all of you that are out there on the, the front line um i'm watching here and um, i'm very appreciative of you standing for us i wish i could be there with you Miigwech and uh, stay strong, whoever's out there listening and in this. I uh, My heart goes out to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, that was a good one. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that feed or not. The protester that's yelling at the line of cops there. <laughs> he, 
He says, I hope you have chronic diarrhea the rest of your fucking lives. I mean, at least some of the protesters are keeping it uh, humorous in ways. Um, so here's a thought. I wonder if Edmonton and Calgary should get on the horn and start calling 911 for emergencies to see how many they can uh, handle when they're all over in Ottawa. That'd be interesting to know, would don't you think? Like, how can they do their job when they're all in Ottawa? I don't know. I feel like um, they know we're peaceful, so they use that to their advantage to be that much more harsher on us because they know we're not going to fight back. And that's just, that's making me sick to my stomach, literally, like physically, like I'm ready to go puke. Is it working? Are you able to get video or photos of where it is that uh, you guys are at for the protest? I did a short live. Damn it, girl. Wanda, I totally slept in. Didn't get out there and soon enough. Do you have your live to post on here, girl? <laughs> the one protester. F social distancing. Bring it in, brother. That's so nice to see. Is that the truck retreating there on the um, the live there? Does anybody know? Are they retreating or just moving over to a different section there? Hi, guys. And it's interesting that you say that, Rocky Mountain, because I, I agree with that. I've been horseback riding since I was nine years old. And... You know, highly trained horses, especially that, like, you know, there's a difference between barn horses that get highly, they get spooked easily. Um, and, you know, usually they've gone through trauma. And even the riders that get on those horses have to be told how to, to like, facilitate that horse. Um, I love horses. I love horses a lot, but, you know, and I'm not trying to say that they're, they're, they're amazing animals, right? They're amazing animals, but, um, they are trained to do exactly that. And this, to me, that that was an orchestrated event, 100%. And if, if you can't handle a horse, you shouldn't be riding it, plain and simple. That It doesn't make any sense that a horse could actually stampede uh, people. That, that Horses don't do that. All right, guys, I am having a bit of an anxiety day probably like most, so I've been trying to chime in and chime out. Um, I am really trying to figure out how to make my way to it, to Ottawa. I've just gotten word that it might be, um, I might be able to have a place to, to go to, which is great. But um, yeah, I'm just dealing with a lot of anxiety right now, and uh, I've already been. So when I went, it wasn't as bad as they said it was. But at the same time, I don't know what I'm stepping into. And um, I do want to go to figure this out to, to, to exactly that, to, to, to see the vibration. Cause I know seeing our unity was amazing. I, I mean, I really feel like the, the rule of Babylon's division has fallen and it was such a beautiful moment for me to witness. Um, 
but I am scared for those that are there right now. And I, and I hope that we are protected by the most high and everybody is just protected. Well, I think the, the liberals probably hoped that the protest would become violent and it has not become violent. So all of the uh, police with the batons and uh, action and forcing and pushing and everything else. And, uh, you know, people are not, not violent out there. It's like the police are the violent people out there that we're seeing in the videos. Obviously the flags. Okay, the pride in the flag is massive. Uh, I love, you know, it's the thought that I'm going around. Everyone's just free right now. You're free when you're here, even though these guys are here trying to stop them. But we're having a good time. Do you watch the, the news in this country? I follow it. I don't watch it. I read it just to see the other side and see what people are getting brainwashed with. Yeah, I do watch that. And, you know, they're trying to shut down this convoy, yeah. but the world is looking at us, the eyes are on us. What do you think is the biggest positive that's going to come from this this movement that started in Ottawa? Well, maybe people are going to start respecting Canada again, because we were right. a joke for a while. Yeah, yeah. And maybe everybody hates you know, just like us. Yeah. Once again, Albertans and, and you know, blue-collar workers cleaning up the mess for Trudeau, right? Yeah. Yeah, clean it up, baby. Clean me up your fucking mess. Yeah. When they clean the streets, too, they sweep them. I do everything. Yeah, yeah. We'll no clean the anywhere. We'll clean the streets. We'll feed the homeless. We'll do your job for you. And we'll do it on our own. East and West all coming together. And Ontario right in the middle. We all hate each other. Thought we did anyway, but now we all love each other. Hell yeah. Right? Hell yeah. Right? Thanks for your time, Dick. Cheers. Cheers. There you go. <clears throat> right behind the police line there. Well, that's already reinforcing what we've already known, at least here in the States. Oh, that uh, Zot video really gives you a good feel of what it's like there. Is there no, uh, no live feeds going on today? I need to know, like, I want to watch this stuff, like, I can't. I'm even trying to uh, Google it or search it on Facebook. There's nothing live right now. Um, yeah, just search ZOT on uh, YouTube. I think the the police chief said that there were about 400, 450 people there today. That's what I, I heard him say on uh, mainstream media. I don't know. I don't think so. But uh, I don't know. Just by what I see there, it seems like more. Copy that. Wow, that's a lot of people. What I see there is exactly the same thing that you would see over on Wellington on a Saturday, on a Saturday evening. It's six o'clock, no, seven o'clock there, four, five, six, no, six o'clock there right now. So the sun has gone down. And really what you see is the same people, the same you know, atmosphere that you would see normally on Wellington, um, you know, on a Saturday, you know, with a protest happening. And, you know, there's nothing, no windows being broken, no damages, just people uh, shouting freedom. Wow, and a lot of people, a lot. Hey, Les, I don't know if you were here when we had somebody that we dubbed as Eyes in the Sky in Ottawa. Um, she was the one that started saying that she would 
um, give the people in Ottawa a shower if they needed it, uh, food to eat. She was a very nice woman. Does anybody know how I may be able to get a hold of her? I don't know. There's probably a channel for that, but this channel here is pretty much just talking about convoy, what you see on uh, feeds and stuff like that, you know, just um, as opposed to, you know, that. I haven't heard anything about that. I used to be one of your day one people when uh, you guys were coincided with the other chat. I don't know what's going on with that. Don't want to get into that. Um, but yeah, it was to the point that you guys had to keep shutting down because you guys were too full. Okay, hey, check out this guy's link that I just posted. He does some uh, pretty good interviews. pretty bad when Russian television is covering uh, the the protest better than uh, the CBC. Sorry, forgive me. I'm just putting a whole bunch of live feeds in the chat of what's currently going on um, in Ottawa. So um, just just putting it out there for anybody that wants to see. I was just listening and I, I heard someone was looking for the, the live feeds. Thank you. So does anybody know, was uh, Trudeau actually uh, like at the House of Commons today or did he just send his lackeys? It was suspended till Monday, I'm not sure. It was going on uh, earlier today. I was watching the feed. Let me see if I can find the link and uh, post it. Cowboys in the showers at Ram Ranch. Big heart throbbing cocks wanting to be sucked. Uh, how did that happen? Oh, the, the room's been open, wide open for chat for, who knows, about a half an hour already.
And that guy did a mic check right when it uh, was unblocked, so. I think the best sign in the crowd is uh, what I saw is Trudeau gets an F. I find it kind of amusing here, um, just starting to watch again, I just took a break for mental health and to have something to eat. I find it kind of amusing that uh, they started pushing us, getting violent, which ended up just bringing more people. <laughs> so they're kind of like, you know, um, doing things the opposite, kind of like, you know, Castro's doing where he's trying to divide us, but in essence, he brought us all together isn't that deadly just wonder if they're prolonging it to try in the end to use it to take away more of our rights and freedoms by prolonging it because really uh they're waiting for the most people to be there to even start with the uh bs Hey there, channel. Uh, I had to step away for a little while. Um, last couple of hours, I guess, as uh, anything bad happened since I had to turn off. Only one troll got whacked. Turned to whack this time. hell of a live feed that I just posted they're down there all singing like thousands of people singing but one of Bon Jovi's songs hopefully it's bad medicine copy text chats open Has there been any more bad behavior on law enforcement side? No, they're at a point now where they pushed them off of Wellington about a block to the south on uh, Bank Street, and uh, they've stopped at that point. They've stopped pushing. I think that's all they're going to push for today. So, because they've stopped pushing, the, the bad behaviors also stopped. Hey, Jimmy Rock, thanks for the uh, kudos there. Yeah, uh, yeah, there you go. For everyone that does talk on here, remember, there are a lot of people that listen all day long. So, when you get on here and give nice updates about what's going on and really this is just an update channel this is not for providing money this is not for providing support this is not for providing um anything that could get anybody in legal trouble this is just playing a channel for talking about the convoy so good that uh, everyone is discussing things but keep it keep it all legal literally have people in here from all walks of life all political views like you name it it's anybody can come in and chat we just got to keep it respectful uh, jimmy rock your mic is turned on you can talk now
think the ones in green are UN elite. Um, all of our police forces have special units in them that maybe people don't normally see that uniform, but I'm pretty sure that those are. Hey guys, first time I'm able to chat on this channel and uh, yeah, just want to verbally say what I said in chat there. Love, love the updates. It's super helpful for those of us that can't really be on the channel all day, but it gives us a chance to catch up after the fact, which is outstanding. So thanks again and uh, keep it strong. Ten four on that one, Jimmy. Thanks for your support. We appreciate it. Yes, I love the name. The police force needs to go home, watch these live feeds of how these people are acting down here. And maybe they'd reconsider. Maybe maybe they would put a little inkling of common sense and compassion into their stubborn little brains and make them think, you know, against what they're being forced into. that global seems to have a live feed it's got no sound um they do do some video cutting but they're showing like next to no violence from the protesters which is kind of odd considering that they were normally stating that they were very violent Are people drinking down there even or no? I, I know there was one guy that had, he was in one of the RVs and I know he had said he was drinking, drinking beer. But are people actually, you know, partying or, or not? There's probably the odd bit of alcohol going around, but, but considering that alcohol actually lowers, lowers your body temperature, um, I don't imagine too many of them are getting drunk, that's for sure. Oh, there's a lot of people smoking uh, Trudeau's weed that he legalized. Um, but no, there's not a lot of drinking going on, amazingly, you know. Even even uh, at the beginning of the whole thing, there was very little uh, alcohol. I loved weed even before it was Trudeau's weed, and I love my own weed now, so... <laughs> That's probably what's keeping everybody calm, too, is that, uh, you know, they're all smoking weed. They're probably hoping the, that, uh, you know, that smell and uh, that smoke kind of spreads out a little. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. It's, and it's a party atmosphere, you know, and people are smoking weed and, you know, partying it up and being calm. And... You know, it's it's just a kind of a party atmosphere. The only one that's offended by the whole thing is, you know, and really, honestly, they, they're getting rid of the trucks, right? Which is a good thing. Everyone should move the trucks out of there and, uh, you know, try and obey the law. And uh, really, honestly, we're just watching, just watching. Uh, it's just amazing to me that two hours ago these people were being beat and pushed and shoved by the law enforcement and they are such a forgiving group and happy and, and just celebrating. It, it's unbelievable. They're probably standing around talking to the cops again. Yeah, but never, never in anyone's life, well, I shouldn't say anyone, maybe if you're an immigrant from some communist country, but never has anyone really stood up for freedom and gone out and, and waved a flag and, you know, this isn't Canada Day. Yeah, I heard, uh, heard on one of the uh, live feeds today that the... Ottawa mayor wants to 
confiscate all the vehicles uh, that they have and sell them off in auction and donate the money. Be a question to send to uh, Viva Frey and see what he says, or Viva Fry and see what he says about it too. That's where the emergency act comes in because he can do it under the emergency act. Oh, is the CBC saying that the police are saying? the drones and everything is for uh, later on so they can use uh, facial recognition software to send people fines after they've already left Ottawa. So, Yeah, just saw the video somebody had posted about this UN planes. The lady was claiming she was at North Bay Airport, wherever that is. I'm not familiar where that's at, North Bay, Ontario. It's not the first time that the UN has been here, apparently, according to some military people I know. They do do, um, like, training and stuff here, so they could be here for whatever, but not involved in this particular incident. Uh, I'm also going to post a, a link um, from City TV, actually. Um, the news reporter and the camera guy are actually in with the truckers and are experiencing the, uh, the smoke and the pepper spray. And, um, yeah, they're actually in with or in with the protesters. So if the emergency act doesn't pass, then the mayor can't se uh, sell the vehicles. Wouldn't that be the case? Not really sure. I don't think any of us have ever really been here before. Although I wouldn't put it past them because it's not like the uh, Ottawa police or the uh, federal government gives a damn about the law right now. Yeah, I don't know, but if you consider the fact that a lot of the truckers moved their vehicles the police have moved a bunch of vehicles there's probably not a whole lot of vehicles left there you've got a crowd of people i don't see any vehicles on the street where the crowd is um and they're busily moving you know as i can see on a ctv video of them uh, moving some vehicles and the crowd is mostly peaceful so i i fail to see where the emergency act is needed like really honestly well that's my point and that's what i think they were trying to do was get this all cleared out long before monday so when they go back in to continue the discussion, they'll say, well, it's no longer needed. But then with that being said, if that's the case, doesn't that negate or would that negate uh, the mayors wanting to sell off the vehicles that they did confiscate to and donate the money if the emergency act isn't in place? Because he was doing it, my understanding is, because of the emergency act. Hey, is anybody watching the lives there? They're um, starting to panic about that sound machine being brought in. What channel B? I'm watching on Twitch there. Um, the, oh, what's his name? I can't even, uh, Br Brant or something like that. Um, 
sorry, I can't remember his name. It's not pulled up here but it's a stream of a bunch of them i'll try and grab it and post it here yeah that's a brand for liberty on twitch.tv trying to get better clarification from Air Force guy I know that's pretty high up. I asked him what the UN troops would be be there for. He said uh, securing the peace. So I'm trying to get a little bit more clarification as in thug police or just more boots on the ground. not the first time that the UN has been here to do different activities. Um, they have been spotted before. Uh, that's why I'm not too, too worried about them being here right now because this isn't the first time. Um, it's probably just the first time that more and more people are paying attention to them being here. Well, I know the thieves that I saw with uh, Quebec, they've got quite the turnout in their convoy up there. It's way too coincidental. Uh, I think we all know why they would have them now. Apparently they do get used to be transporting stuff too. Um, I know the first time people got upset with seeing them here around the Ottawa area was, um, I think it was about a year ago, they saw a lineup of them at some building somewhere. So, of course, all the this cons conspiracy started. Um, I was corrected by somebody who was in the military that that is absolutely not an unusual sight. It just nobody was paying attention before, but they're they're used. They are here quite a bit. Funny how how much we don't pay attention to things until we do. What's that? The, the uh, convoy in the USA that starts in uh, California and ends up in Washington is starting on the 23rd? Yes, that's correct. So that, that's uh, Hildebrandt. Pastor Hildebrandt on the microphone there uh, talking to the crowd. Sound machine is. Sorry, I think I bumped you. I started transmitting right when you started transmitting. I think I ended up booting you, sorry. Okay, I was just saying that uh, the sound machine is used to, I believe, to scramble uh, different types of cell service. And also, um, I think at certain frequencies, it can hurt people's ears. Yay. To give you an update on that, the, the sound machine that is very directional and produces a frequency that, uh, you know, and an and a amplitude, a volume that is so loud that uh, it just makes you nauseate, nauseous, nauseous, want to throw up. So that's called L-R-A-D, L-R-A-D. Mm -hmm. And uh, anything that could interfere with cellular would be uh, Cell Jammer, which is a completely different product. And they are available. In fact, you can buy them <laughs> on eBay. But uh, yeah, whether or not the government has that, probably. Yeah, it's probably in their arsenal of tools.
couldn't they just blow fo fog horns in their faces? Like, you know, like, uh, yeah, just blow their fog horns in those cops' faces. They're not, they're not really doing anything right. And then, I don't know. I don't know. Well, at this point, the objective of Trudeau is to get the people out of there, to move all of the people completely out, completely out, not just right there, but completely out. But it's uh, it's something that's going to take a matter of days to accomplish, apparently. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, that it was they were doing this in a systematic way throughout the days. Well, yeah, that's that's what their plan is. I think tonight is they're going to hit everybody tonight with that LRAD metal. They think hopefully keep people from coming back. Oh, they're pushing big push on there right now. Actually, uh, I don't know why the purpose of moving that. Wow. Oh. Right, guys. Let's see what they're doing. Yeah, they're moving. They're moving the lines. Yeah, they're moving. Careful with the snowbanks. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you can hear some of the uh, the voices. The people are being uh, shoved. The whole it's like a whole crowd of hundreds of people that are being forced to move all of a sudden. <laughs> They're pepper spraying. They're pepper spraying. Cover your mouth. Welcome to Canada. The new normal. What? You didn't know that freedom came with pepper spray? Fuckers. They're shooting spray into the crowd. They're shooting spray into the crowd. They're spraying the whole town. Spraying the whole damn crowd. Let me get back and I see Wow. I only got a mist of it. You see him? They're spraying the crowd. I only got a whiff of that. They're spraying the whole damn crowd. There's there's people, there's ladies there with direct hits of pepper spray that can barely stand up. They're rubbing snow in their faces. Good thing, good thing there's snow there. That's a good idea. Yeah, they pretty much pepper sprayed the whole crowd. He's got some stuff for you. He's got stuff for you. We're listening to Travel Fun 69. Travel Fun 69 on uh, YouTube. Spraying the crowd here. <laughs> well, that's they advanced. They started spraying everybody. Yeah, horrible little thoughts. Yeah. They're pushing again, apparently. Oh, <laughs> 
So it appears like uh, pepper spray is the uh, is the chemical of choice for uh, to be used against freedom fighters. In the states, at least in Oregon, uh, during the BLM riots and uh, protests, um, they got it passed somehow, some way, they got it passed that the police could not use uh, pepper spray and tear gas. Well, it, you know, it's, it goes into the human rights issue, right? Like, people do have human rights, and, like, at what point, you know, you can say, well, pepper spray is uh, uh, non-lethal, you know, which it is. But, but yeah, no, it's, it's the optics of them doing it and just seeing the people being hit and having to rub snow in their faces and... And really, it's getting uh, starting to get a little out of hand, I'd say. Never mind the pepper spray. They're shooting rubber bullets. There's a lady on the side shooting bullets. Yeah, rubber bullets. Okay, I know they have the rubber bullet guns. I never heard any report of them actually mm -hmm. shooting rubber bullets. They've shot two of them already. I heard them and seen seen it. Well, that's like I said, uh, check that link that I posted out earlier up in the feed. And like I said, the guy sounds like he's a little bit exaggerating on some stuff, trying to draw listeners. But if you look at the videos and the still shots that he has, you see uh, that the one reporter got shot smack in the leg at close range. City TV reporter by chance because he was actually right in with the protesters, him and his camera guy, and they got uh, pepper sprayed and uh, pushed around a little bit too. No, it was a female. It's up in the link. You'll you'll see it. She uh, and then you see the gun drop on the ground, and then the cop, one of the cops, uh, reaches down and throws it further behind them. The video feed I'm watching right now. I think it's the same one you guys got on. Uh, one guy's got a dog there. It's like, man, you got to get your dog out of there. Especially if your poor pup gets pepper sprayed. Yeah, well, I, saw, I saw a family there with two children walking through the crowd there before the pepper spray. And it's good that the kids see how this kind of stuff happens, but... Like, not that close. Come on. They need to get them backed out of there a bit. And the animals, too. I wonder what they would do if everybody would just lay down in the snow. Just lay down on the ground as they're pushing forward. There, another shot was just shot. Like, don't they get it? There's a guy right there who got pepper sprayed, and all he's doing is treating himself, but standing his ground and in the front line still. They're not going anywhere, guys. Like, what don't they get about that? Well, the police want to move the people out. 
But if they move them out of the downtown area, then they, they're going to move them into the residential area, uh, which they, they, don't have, they, they don't have a plan at this point. It's like, what are you going to do? You just spray, spray the people with pepper spray and hope they go home. That's what they're doing. And how quickly it was dismissed as soon as it was, it was mentioned about uh, the WEP or WEF. At uh, Freeland, uh, the deputy prime minister just got a big job with them, didn't she? Yeah, she does, and you can see all the MPs that have the WEF pin on their jacket every time they're at the Chamber of Commons. That's like a little rainbow, so it's very uh, easy to see which MP uh, is part of the WEF. I wonder if Trudeau has uh, realized that you can keep shoving these people out of the city, but it doesn't get the problem to go away. The people are still going to keep coming. I think he just didn't realize how big the fringe minority is. Or how much of an impact are 12, which I actually counted, there were probably about 13 of them, of those trucks that were there. So I think they just underestimated our, our uh, 13 trucks there, guys. Yeah, 13 trucks on their noisy horns. Wow. I think it was probably more so those uh, kids with the bouncy hat, bouncy castles, were probably screaming like crazy. Well, and our, our Canadian geese there, right? They uh, they were really loud, and uh, the honking just you know upset those Ottawa residents that knew full well where they were moving. They moved into the area of the Parliament, so. Yeah, you combine, you combine those bouncy castles, our, our 13 trucks, and uh, some Canadian geese, and man, it's it's World War Three here, guys. So if we learned anything, we now know Parliament Hill is not a family-friendly zone. And here I was scared of the clown It from the movie It by Stephen King. I, I think we have a clown that uh, has surpassed that now. I think all children are probably going to be scared of, of the clown we have here. So, It, sorry, you're out of the spotlight there, buddy. You got overturned by a new clown. Oh, and we can't forget coming up close in second there is John Wayne Gacy too, right? Has anyone else paid really close attention to the cops? It seems like none of them are wearing body cameras. Uh, I've seen a couple of them. They're the big black box on their chest, isn't it? Maybe. Um, I know here they're 
about the size of a uh, little bigger than a pager. I had mentioned that a couple of days ago that none of the cops had any type of body cameras on them in the police lineup. They don't want their bad doings recorded. They don't want proof that they're beating people and something in court of law being brought up like that. Les, what was that uh, picture of something that looked like a, a jumbo jack, you know, from uh, playing jacks? What, what was that? Uh, does anybody know? That was way earlier in the feed. Yeah, I just posted a picture of it. You guys watching that branch there um i can't see who it is but they uh closed off the one road and one guy comes and all of a sudden you can see the swarm coming let's go canada there was a uh romanian gentleman uh that was talking on the uh people's convoy uh for the u.s uh talking about it and he says the peaceful isn't going to work. He said you have to get tough and, and fight. He said because if you don't, it's not going to work. He said this is, this is what they did in uh, Romania, and it didn't work. And then the people had to do literally an uprising, and then changes were uh, to come about. But I don't know. I'm just repeating what he said. Yeah, but you have to keep in mind we're Canadian and we're a lot different than the states in Romania and elsewhere. Um, we resort to that um, very little. And so um, I don't know if that's quite uh, appropriate to be sharing with anybody. Um, we all have all our feelings about it, but Canadians are peaceful people. And so regardless of how other people feel in their own countries, that's their, you know, that's their right and whatever. But Canadians keep it peaceful regardless of whether we think it's going to work or not. I think, I think the crowd knows who's responsible. I'll have a look. That dude was quite the gentleman. Brings this girl down for a hot date night. He's all decked out in his goggles so he don't get pepper sprayed. But nah, she's okay. She'll, she'll be able to keep a pretty face there. That'll, that'll, that'll keep the pepper spray away. Come on. <laughs> I, I'm keeping my eyes peeled when I seen that Calgary cops were there and uh, Edmonton police were there. I wonder if our wonderful uh, Dictorian Vicland here in Sylvan Lake is up. Uh, on the front lines there he should be <laughs> that's his that's his piece of pie jason kenny says alberta is filing a court challenge to the use of the emergencies act under his balls good More pepper spray, I'm spraying them. Oh, there's a guy on camera that uh, got hit with pepper spray. He's uh, back in there on the ground. Looking for help. That was that time that one protester was yelling in their face and telling them that they were a POS. He got really hurt over that. So, you know, he uh, he had to go cry to his uh, colleagues there. So th that's what uh, 
Castro's talking about, you know, when when they got called that name there. Isn't that something, hey guys? They're shooting off rubber bullets and pepper spray. And us Canadians are shooting off confetti. Confetti shots. That just goes to show how we are as Canadians. It's unbelievable. You go to the City TV Live on YouTube. Um, that camera crew is literally right in there. Um, they've also been getting kind of shot at with the rubber bullets. Um, and they have gotten hit with the pepper spray a little bit or whatever that smoke stuff was. Um, yeah, they're right in there. So that's what my husband's watching right now on YouTube is the City TV crew. husband said if they wanted a story they got one now because right now they're in with the, you know right in the belly of the beast and they're getting treated just like they're a criminal you know it sure makes a person wonder you know like a that they must be getting paid wickedly amounts of money that we're paying for them to do this to us <laughs> And B, like, what kind of pep talk do they have for them in there? Like, are they, like, playing that mental game with them where they're like, you know what, guys, you know, you might not agree with what's going on, but this is your job and this is what you have to do. Because, like, anybody in their right state of mind and with the amount of yelling and the stories and the heartbreak that they're telling these people and they can sit there and rock on their boots with their cutoff uh you know broomsticks and shovels and like i i am just i'm astonished maybe that's why they brought in un troops to do this people who don't have any country feeling or thoughts or care about the land that they are on. They are there only to break the people and so-called make peace, if you want to call it make peace. The people that are there, they need to be listening to uh, languages spoken from these thugs to see if they can pick up on any uh, dialect or accents that they could figure out where these uh, people are from. They stated they're actually a special forces from Quebec. Look at them all trying to act like they're deadly there. Oh, let's back up because, you know, our people are just going to rush them and be violent to them. We better back up backwards. No, just turn the F around and walk away. You know, like, just too deadly, you guys. Too deadly. You know, they better not be playing this game that I feel they've been playing with us all along. You know, when they're backing up, everybody's like, oh, they're retreating. Well, you know, if Canadians haven't realized right now, they're playing a mental game. They put masks on us, take it off. Put it back on us, take it off. Put it back on us, take it off. And if you haven't realized that a lot of people's minds, that's how you can form them. Because each time that they take it away again, they're making our minds a little bit more weaker to get in there. So I sure hope that's not what they're doing. Like, And if that's the case, then we're going to see some more aggression coming and then pushing us again. So it's like two step forward, one step back when you think you're gaining when you're really not. This guy needs to get his dog out of there. There's two dogs there, I know. And... That's St. Bernard, he needs to get them animal, that animal out.
Yeah, I copy that. No, what they did is they, they just put up a fence there. So they're retreating back to the fence, and then they're going to go on the other side of the fence, and that's where the crowd will have to stay on this side of the, the fence that they put up there. I don't know what was with that tractor driving through there. <laughs> with spreading sand on the sidewalk or something, which was kind of weird. I didn't see that on the feed I've got. Oh, look, the clown house is next door there. They can go get their big max. Look at that, eh? Maybe the clown's in there. They should go check. Go eat, guys. Go eat, guys. Wow, remember in the old days it was, uh, you know, Sundance and the uh, whatever. <laughs> Here in Canada, it's like on uh, on Bank Street, outside of the McDonald's. <laughs> Right? Like, go get your Big Mac or your Trudeau combo. <laughs> oh, man, you can't make this up. Even CBC is saying, well, we haven't seen people get directly violent with police. Yes, that's exactly what you were expecting, weren't you? That's what you were provoking, weren't you? But it didn't happen. Nobody's getting violent. Well, all, except the police. The only violence that I have seen so far is coming from the police. All of the uh, demonstrators are just being pretty mild. What I don't get is that they're saying that this is their, they're doing this so that they can reopen the area for people to live peacefully downtown and to have the businesses working there. They're blocking it off. So where is the business going to go? Like they're not getting any more further ahead by pulling all this BS than they were three days ago when actually people were allowed to roam around and you know patronize those businesses and stuff this is unbelievably backwards and it's just i can't believe people can't everybody like i mean everybody i know people see it but i mean everybody can't see what's going on so they got the fence up to prevent anybody for going any further. But yet you see those two clowns there on top of that truck ready to start firing. What's the deal here? Why are they doing that? Why are they being violently in position when they have a fence up for peaceful protesters? All optics for the news. That's what it is. They, they want to make it portray it like it's violent. My hubby's watching the Toronto and what the St. Louis Blues, it looks like, uh, game. And the seats are kind of empty. I'm wondering why. Maybe they're out uh, fighting for our freedoms. 